I wanted to take a break today from talking about graphic novels to talking about a book. A sort of a manifesto is what you could call this. And it's really an important book and I think everybody needs to read this book. And I think maybe because people don't know what it is, they might not be inclined to pick it up the first time around. Between the world and me. If you don't know who Tana Hesse Coates is, you need to know who that is uh, pretty quickly. Uh, currently he is writing Black Panther graphic novels and comic books and he's a really important writer and he's the author of this book which won the National Book Award in the United States last year and is kind of essential reading for everybody in the world right now. Why? Because there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now that we should probably be talking about. As you know, Donald Trump is the incumbent president of the United States of America, which is a kind of a scary thing for a lot of people because he built his entire campaign on a lot of racist rhetoric. What does it mean to make America great again? What are we talking about? When was America great that he wants to go back to? Is he talking about a time in which, you know, the KKK had a stranglehold over ideas of race? Is he talking about a time during slavery? Is he talking about a time during Jim Crow? I don't honestly know what he's talking about and I think we need to unpackage that because uh, if we're not sure then really like that message is unclear and it's a scary thing to not be clear on. So Ta-Nehisi Coates his first, the first section of the book is written to his son after Michael Brown was killed. And if you don't know who Michael Brown was, he was an unarmed black man who was killed by the police and the police were not charged. At the same time, of course, we could think about Trayvon Martin, we could talk about Michael Brown, we could talk about a lot of different names on a, a long list of young black men whose uh, bodies are vulnerable. And that's kind of the, the main point of this, is that for black men in America, it is their bodies that are under constant threat of danger. Uh, sometimes that's from the police, sometimes that's from gangs, sometimes that's from uh, administration at schools and teachers and peers and um, racist individuals on the street. It's really, really important that we sort of reflect on that and understand what that's like. We don't. We're not going to really understand what that's like, but at least it helps us to sort of think about that, and it's forgotten, and particularly in Canada, we don't... I, I'm at the at risk of getting a little bit worked up, but in Canada, I think there's this sort of idea that Black Lives Matter is this kind of fringe movement in the United States of America that, that you know, doesn't make sense from us, and, and, you know, if all you're ever getting your information from is Reddit or 4chan or whatever else, then that might be what you actually believe because uh, that's all you're hearing. But the reality is, like, it, it is so, so important that you recognize that in the United States of America, in a lot of parts of America, and let's be honest, in parts of Canada, there is sort of a perception that some lives matter more than other lives. That's this is 2016. That's not okay. We are not. We should not be okay with that being the status quo. Um, I really hope that that doesn't need to be said. I really hope that you know that's something that you take for granted. But uh, sadly, that is not something that the world sort of takes for granted. The way that our systems throughout society are working are not benefiting those people who have been historically marginalized, uh, including you black young men, including uh, immigrants from, from all over the world. We live in a, in a society where the status quo is still one of white supremacy. That if you look at how society is structured all the way along, there are systems that, that benefit whiteness. Part of that is because you and I, if you're white, don't walk down the street feeling that at any moment we could be attacked by police officers or gangsters or all these other kinds of things. Like Hopefully you have the safety and comfort that if you called the police, that somebody would come and answer in a relatively quick amount of time. If you are a person of color, there is some question that lingers there. That is a, a real reality that's happening in places like Atlanta and Baltimore and uh, Toronto and Vancouver because we are still part of this. If you don't understand what it is I'm trying to say, 
Or even if you do understand what it is I'm trying to say, but you want to hear it said by someone who is so much better at saying it than I am, you can do no better than this particular book. It ties together so many things that are going on in the world right now. They come all together in this book, and I really, really think that you will, you'll come away with a better understanding of of just what injustice looks like in our planet and why it is people are so frustrated with the status quo. And and if you don't believe that racism is still a thing in 2016 because we've had eight years of a black president, uh, please read this book because that is so, so, so untrue. If the fact that Donald Trump just got elected didn't convince you that racism is still alive and well, you really, really re need to read this book. And if you, if you are more of a, like a watching the movies kind of person, uh, you've got to watch the documentary 13th. You really ought to check them out.